2008, one of the craziest reality TV movies was released. Filmed in the streets of Brooklyn and Harlem in New York City, it featured robberies, carjackings, murder, and even home invasion. This film was known as Criminals Gone Wild. Even 10 years later, the film is still popular on the internet and the controversy surrounding it remains. But the biggest question people still have, is it real? Let's find out. Criminals Gone Wild was shot over 10 years ago on a handheld mini DV camera at only 30 frames per second. So please excuse the low quality picture and audio you're going to see. First, let's start with Criminals Gone Wild's backstory. In late 2007, Usala Alim, who now goes by the name Presley Snipes, began making a film about criminal psychology for his film class at Megar Evers College in New York City. According to him, when he was interviewing the criminals, they began to commit crimes for the camera. Usala released an unfinished version of Criminals Gone Wild locally in New York City in late 2007 before releasing the final project on a DVD nationally on April 22, 2008. Back in 2008, DVDs were the norm, and Usala charged $27 a copy. Funny enough, for $80, you can get Criminals Gone Wild and GTA 4 bundled together. I don't know if this was real or just a, a gimmick to tie in Criminals Gone Wild with GTA 4 that came out at the same time, but I mean, it kind of makes sense if you think about it, because Criminals Gone Wild was filmed in New York City, and... GTA 4 takes place in Liberty City, which is based off New York City. Anyway, moving on. Immediately after the release of Criminals Gone Wild in New York City, both the liberal and conservative media launched a witch hunt against Usala, accusing him of glorifying a criminal element in the black community. Much like bum fights, the media only helped grow its popularity and boosted the sales of the film even more. Criminals Gone Wild consists mostly of interviews of thugs around Brooklyn, but does follow around three particular criminals. A thug named Jay Ryder that robs his friends, a serial carjacker that steals two cars, and the only white criminal that is a depressed burglar and thief. Criminals Gone Wild begins with a do not try this at home warning, and also tells viewers not to make copycat videos of themselves committing crimes. Right after that, the film opens up with interviews with the local criminals. They got it made. I work just as fucking hard and I get shit. It was quick. I felt it was best. I don't consider this shit I do a crime, man. It's just life. Shit I gotta do. The first crime caught on camera shows a criminal thug rob an unsuspected victim in the streets of Brooklyn. He pulls a pistol out and puts it to the man's stomach and tells him to give him everything he's got. The man, visibly startled, complies with his orders. After that, it's a part that I actually found funny. The thugs and criminals are asked what they think of the police and just listen to their responses. What should I think of? Fuck them. Yo, man, fuck the cops, man. Fucking crackers ass police, them pig ass motherfucker, they dirty man. Fuck the police. Fuck them, fuck the law, we raw. Fuck them. Fuck the cops, tell you the truth. Fuck the police, man. I don't like the police. Police don't like me, why am I like them? They should go arrest a priest or something. Fuck them. Fuck every last motherfucking cop out here. The niggas that be walking around in blue and white. DTs, they can all suck my dick. I don't really think about the police, you know what I mean? That's what I think about the I don't think anything of them. I can go fuck about them. They ain't locking me up. I'm good. They ain't from where I'm from. They don't understand why the fuck we do what we do. You know what I'm saying? And to me, cops is just a regular dude. Police just next motherfucker that got a job. After another malicious robbery, the bipolar burglar breaks into a house, only to be scared away by the owner pulling up to the driveway. Come on, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Then, a man armed with a handgun casually walks up to two people and robs them for their cars. In both instances, Usala Alim, who's filming the incident, gets in the front seat and drives away with the carjacker. 
fucking nigga, man. Come on, man, move. Afterwards is the most disturbing part of the film. A shooting, if not murder, is caught on tape when a basketball game between two thugs goes sour. You could see in the video, they begin to argue with each other after the one with the dreads begins playing dirty. The one with the hat gets annoyed and decides he isn't going to check, so he throws the ball back at him. In a pushing, shoving match, the one with the dreads gets thrown into the camera and becomes extremely angry. And in a cowardly act, he runs to get his gun. Oh, shit. We then cut to Jay Ryder as he visits his DJ friend who's in the process of making a rap album. These niggas is lame. Shit, bump it, my nigga. You a raw of these niggas, though. <laughs> shit, bump. Fuck these niggas. Oh, shit, son. Oh, what up, son? Visually surprised by the presence of the cameraman, the DJ is completely unaware of the impending disaster. Nah, that's my son. You know, he just gets the camera, you know. You know, we about to be movie stars and yeah, all that. Like, he's going to Hollywood, really go, son. You know, like, you know, nah, ain't nothing, son. Y'all need to promote that beat y'all can get in the beat. Jay and his accomplice then draw 9mm out and order the DJ and the DJ's friend to get on the floor. You can listen to Jay Ryder and his friend maliciously taunt the victims as they point their pistols at them. Get on the floor. Are you serious? Get on the floor. Get on the floor. Simple and sweet. Simple. Hey, yo. Jay, what's poppin', man? To ensure they're not lying, Jay Ryder and his friend pat down the victims and take their wallets, phones, and inventory. Where's that? Ice cream? Where's that? Ice cream? Where's that, man? Where's that? We came here to see this. Oh, they got a phone, son. No, man. That's that new stash right there, man. To stash right there. Take the stash. Whoa, man. They call that. Ten years, man. Ten years, man. This nigga is retarded. This nigga is crazy. Yo, this ten years ago. Let's go. The thug then laughs as he leaves the apartment building with the stolen goods. Oh, it don't work. Oh. <laughs> it is unknown how much money Usala Ali made on Criminals Gone Wild. Estimates range anywhere from 400000 to over a million. No, not stopping. Around this time, however, many people who bought Criminals Gone Wild and saw it on the internet began to shake their heads and wonder whether or not if what they're watching is real. Some people think it's real, some people think it's fake. So much so that the NYPD actually launched an investigation on Usala, but so far he hasn't been charged with anything. Damn. <laughs> Score! <laughs> Use the bank, asshole! He's being what? Taken out of In 2008, car? Usala agreed to an interview on the Clinton project. News Network. That is, that is a card At the deck. same time, however, project. Jay Ryder and his professor center. came onto the show the to attempt to debunk criminals gone wild and prove it's fake. Is Alex O'Donoghue. He's a senior at uh, Medgar Evers College in uh, New York. He appears in Criminals Gone Wild, and he brought his professor with us, Winston Mitchell, who says his students are just actors and uh, they're not criminals. All right. Would, would you say the man claiming to be an actor is named Alex O'Donoghue, and he claims that everything was staged. It is confirmed, however, that that is him, as you can see here. I have also been able to confirm that Professor Mitchell is a real professor at Medgar Evers. However, Usala claims that he has a tape that proves that the man named Alex O'Donoghue is in fact a criminal named Jay Ryder. That's neither here nor there. But I'm, let me tell you something. I have this tape right here, and this will prove to what everything. This will make this will totally smash your credibility. All right, what is because it? Because 
this this is a tape proven what I'm saying. I didn't release this because I was I was in fear of my life. I'm not even lying. I was in fear of my life. But if I release this tape to the public, this will prove that he is who he's who he is. Jay right. Ryder. You know, I have. I was. Go ahead, the, Professor. I was, in the car. I was in the car with Alec, right. and that producer called him. Alec put it on the on the speaker phone. I heard him saying, "Yo, just chill out for about a couple more months so I can make money. Can't you go into that? hiding? Yeah. Yes, you did. So, Salah, if that. you still well, have that you, tape that you held in your hand in this interview, we'd like to see it. He's portraying more black on because 10 years from now, when Alex goes looks for a job, someone will Google this, see him as a criminal, and he won't be able to get a job. And he'll 10 years and say, what happened to my life? Why? Because this guy wants to make a dollar. Really most important question for us. However, after intensive searches, I was not able to find anybody by the name of Alec or Alex O'Donohue that looks like that that ever attended Megar Evers College or even lives in New York City. This could give a little bit of credence to Usala's story. Would you think I would do a crime? A sequel called Criminals Gone Wild 2 Menace to Humanity was planned to be released sometime around 2008 or early 2009. However, we never got a full release. Instead, portions of Criminals Gone Wild 2 were uploaded to its YouTube channel. The Criminals Gone Wild website, though, was shut down around 2011, but its YouTube channel still remains active, and it's probably still ran by Usala himself. As of 2018, most clips of Criminals Gone Wild 2 have been removed from YouTube, but some of them still remain up. World Star Hip Hop is another reason why Criminals Gone Wild 2 never got a full release, because people kept stealing clips of Criminals Gone Wild and even the movie itself and posting it on World Star. Usala Alim now goes by the name Presley Snipes and is still making movies. Currently, he works in the music business and directs music videos. I'll give a link to his channel in the video description. So, is Criminals Gone Wild real or fake? Well, that's up for you to decide. You could choose to believe Presley Snipes, or you could choose to believe the people who claim they're actors. But we all know that Criminals Gone Wild caused a lot of outrage and offended many people and will earn its place in history. One thing is for sure, is that we learn from things, no matter how despicable or acceptable someone sees it. Thanks for watching. Yes, I would be willing to swear on the Bible that this is 100% real. And I would like to say God bless America and God bless criminals going wild.